Okay, 1204, we are in our webinar. I've started the webinar. It will be recorded and will be placed on our Spatial Business YouTube site once we're finished with it. So we will have it on that YouTube site. What, we'll, what we will be talking about is Substation Design Suite Physical, the 7.4.3 release. It's an incremental release. We're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about utility content that has been updated and where we, we will be looking at running round bus. And of course, my name is Steve, and I am your host. Taylor's working the uh, machines in the background to keep the webinar working. So this is where we are today. Uh, we will have a Q&A, a question and answer at the end, as we always do, and uh, that's open to any substation design suite type of question. I'm not very good with um, advanced physics, so please don't ask that. Basic physics, maybe. Okay, so what we're going to do is talk about SDS Physical 7.43 release. And the first thing I want to do is get into our website. Now, what also we have new is our website has been updated. So I'm going to go into substationdesignsuite.com, and that will take me directly to Spatial Business Substation Design Suite. In here, if I need to log in, I can log in directly into our portal here. Just out of this button here, I come directly into our portal. Again, we can still log in if we scroll down, down here. There, we can also log in as well here. What we have in here is added more information, more videos in here so that you can review some videos in here as well. So we'll have videos on our website, videos on our knowledge base, and videos on YouTube. So we have a, a fair amount of information available for people. I'm going to come into and log in. And I'll come into Substation Design Suite. And here you can see all our help videos as well as our downloads. We have the 7.4 release notes here and you will be able to download these if you want to review them. We're going to review them shortly, but I want to make sure everyone's aware of the downloads for the software itself. There's a key thing here that we I want to show everybody that we can see. At the set, not everyone will have the screen that I have. I have uh, the advanced screen issue here. But if you look at our naming here, what we have in here is that Inventor Substation Design Suite Toolkit for Inventure is good for 2018 through to 2021. So we're able to um, work with 2021. Uh, we no longer support the 2017. I'm sure Substation Design Suite will continue to work with 2017, but we're not going to support it, mainly because Autodesk isn't going to support it. So we're good for 2018 to 2021, and that's the 743 version. If you look below here, the uh, SDS PNC is also 2018 to 2021. So just want to make sure you're aware of that. And if you use our software, it is good for all versions of Inventure. It will op operate the same from 2018 to 2021. And it's one install tool. So a number of, of things there to talk about. I want to get into the release notes here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the release notes, and then we'll get into um, Inventor and work with uh, SDS Physical in Inventor. So it's an incremental release. The main reason we released it is this last note here at, at the bottom. We had an install issue that we wanted to uh, clear up, and we wanted to clear that up right away. So when we did that, we said, well, we have a little bit of time. We have um, some good um, programmers, uh, people in the background there to do stuff, so we added some other items. Uh, we've gone back to the SDS model editor. We've, we've, we've returned to that. We had it in the past. We went to the SDS intelligence, cloud intelligence tool, but with utility content being updated, we came back to the SDS model editor. So when you install 743, we will have the SDS model editor. So let's go up, come up to view. Well, if you have it, you'll see, if you install it, 743, you will see the SD model editor here. 
you can add it to your add-ins and then come up to view user interface and you have the model editor here so some of some of you users who have been using substation design suite physical you'll recognize it from the past it's very much identical to what we had in the past so this is here available and this is for doing the um, electrical clearance design checks that we have we identify our parts and work with that so we have documentation on that and there's also a YouTube video on it as well as knowledge base video on this as well so I want to bring that up that that is now back and we're using this that's the first thing I wanted to get through the second item is we have a new ribbon access to utility content so we'll go over the the new utility content site it's bigger faster better uh, we also have a new bus tool that we'll, we will be working with, so we'll take a look at that. We've corrected some other issues, and you can go through the uh, release notes for those. But I'm going to get into Inventor, and we're going to look at B and C here and bringing these items in. So let's look at our Inventor. I have my um, substation design suite physical open. And when I come up to the tools here, the first thing we're, what we're going to see here new is this button here, utility content. So utility content now has a tool directly in here so that we can access it uh, very easily. So I hit utility content and now I am in the utility content site, the new one. I'm going to sign out just so you guys can see how we sign in now. It has changed. So when I hit sign in, you can see we can sign in with our SBS credentials or with LinkedIn. I imagine most will be using the SBS credentials to log in. So I can log in with that, log in with SBS, and there I am. So I'm, a, I'm set up as an advanced user. We're going to have two different types of users, but I'm going to start on the left with the home page. One thing with the home page has changed with utility content. Well, I should say mention one of the first things that changed with utility content. It's now a HTTPS, S meaning secure, right, security. So it's a better site for us to work with. Uh, the previous one didn't have the S. Um, so we're all nice, tight, and secure with that. When I'm in the home page, I can see in my list here the newest content that has been added to the software or to the um, the web base, the, the web page, and I can also see the most popular this week items. So we have changed some items in here, so it's a little bit easier to see, and, and it's operating much faster. We did a lot of stuff in the background, a lot of work with the uh, servers in the background to make it a little uh, nicer looking, but really uh, performance issues. If I am logged in now, I'm going to come into Browse, and I can search for a number of things. I can search by vendors. I can search for all uh, CEPHCOR items. So in here, I can just keep scrolling through. And you can see how fast that page updated. I can load more. And I can just keep scrolling through. So it's not necessarily the best, but you will see all your CEPHCOR items in, in here. I can also search by by type of file. We're going to be having tags. When people upload their files to our content, they will be able to add tags to it. So if I want to see all the major equipment available, I'm able to do that as well. Further, I can come in here. I'll, I'll turn off that. I can come in here in our search tools. It's a little bit better search tool than in the past. If I look up ASTI, which most people would do is, is I need an ASTI SEPCOR fitting. You know, that's that's a fairly common number. And maybe I want it all, uh, I guess, 64 size. So now I can do a search on that. So this search is way better than our old search tool. It's finding all ASTIs with 64 in the name. And it's bringing them all up. And if I want to see, there's zero remaining. So it's brought up 100% of them. If I want to come down and look at the details. I can look at the details of that part. The details are going to change by part depending on how someone uploads them, but you can see the uh, the detail here. Bus support is the description. Uh, we have vendor catalog page, 
other details, there's a, here's the tag filter, aluminum. So we have a number of information in here. And this is the available to download. So what we're doing is using the um, uh, forge in the background that can convert files. So then really nice thing about the forge in the background, we can upload different 3D model uh, file types from different companies because not everybody come, every company uses the Autodesk tool. Some companies might use SolidWorks or um, the other one, Solid Edge or whoever. But we're able to take up any of those and then convert it back to any of these, right? So we're able to download these items. If we hit the Seth Core name, that will bring us to a page where we can contact that company with an email directly to them. All right, so we're able to do that. So if you see a problem with a part or if you want a, a specific part, you can contact them directly from here and send a message. So let's go back in the details and we'll look at the, de the, the details. And it doesn't matter which part of grab a SEFCOR part or a, a major equipment item. I can come down and add to downloads. I'm going to add it to my downloads page. And then up here at the top, I get downloads with a little one up here. So I've added something to my downloads. I'm going to come into my downloads, and I can download this guy. So I'm going to go to my secure links. Again, security is the issue here. And I'm able to download a step file, an IPT file, or a DWG file. So the DWG file is a 3D DWG. It's like a wireframe 3D item. The step file, of course, is just the uh, the most common um, CAD file for um, working with other CAD versions. So that's CAD file that can be imported in, into Inventor in the IPT file. The IPT file can be either a completely native Inventor with all the features and, par and parameters that can be changed, or the IPT file could be a converted file from a step file. So let's say somebody uploaded from um, a different, uh, from SolidWorks, they uploaded and gave it to us, a vendor, and then it's been converted. You can still get the IPT file down, but it won't be parametric. It will be a uh, derived IPT. So some of them will be native inventors, some will be um, derived I IPTs, but you can bring them in directly. And of course, that would just go to your download location. We still have our configure page. We page we're still using three uh, C three sixty to uh, for our con configuration files. We are working on having more configuration files. But what we want to have is our customers, uh, our uh, vendors, to uh, make our files. So if, for those who aren't, aren't aware, you can come in here. You can configure your own model to the size that you need. So we'll let that update, and we can come down here and say, well, I don't want 123, I want a 48 kV voltage. And we'll update. And I'll, I'll be doing a separate video on this, and, and we'll place it up on the um, um, YouTube or on our website, Knowledge Base. So we can do different things in here. And of course, we can download. We can download it as a, a SAT or a STEP. So typically, people would download a STEP file, and, you, and we would have this. So you can see that piece. If I come to Dashboard, uh, for users who are not the advanced users that can upload, you will see something slightly different than this one. Uh, but for those who can upload, which are going to be uh, mostly the vendors, They'll be able to look at their their content, manage it. They'll be able to download and identify how many times a part's been downloaded. Again, you'll be able to contact the vendor if you see a problem with it or if, if you like something specific, we can do that as well. So we're able to upload and download that way. So that's all I'm really going to talk about utility content. And we're going to have a Q&A af afterwards, and this will be recorded, so we will have that available. So what I want to get on to next is more with Substation Design Suite. We talked about the, the um, 
uh, the version 4 update, uh, 7, well, 743, the 743 update. So what I want to do is talk about our new tool. We have this utility content tool I showed you there. What we have a new tool up here is when you come up to above grade tools and pull down our bus tools, we have bus point to bus point to add bus. So this is a new tool we added. It um, it just clarified some other issues that this tool was combined with some other tools and it wasn't as obvious as it could be. So now it's very obvious that we can run bus point to bus point. So the purpose of this is to be able to run directly to a point to a point. And we don't have to, have to be parallel to the bus axis. We can be at any angle, any direction. It would just go to that point. So if I'm going to run, let's say I'm going to run bus point to bus point between these two spheres, let's let's do this one first. So I'm going to run bus point to bus point between these two spheres. I am going to change my bus settings and maybe uh, minus 2.5 inches on one side. And of course, we can be a metric here as well. I can just put mm behind it uh, and minus uh, 3 inches on this side. And if I knew knew the exact numbers of uh, these spheres of that number, um, we would be able to do that. So let's run my bus point to bus point. I can run the bus point here to the bus point there. And you can see how that is angled this way and angled slightly off-centered that way as well. So if I came through and I did the same thing, I can delete this run, and of course, delete deletes the bus pipe as well as the file from win, from the Windows directory. So if I come from here to here, I can do that same run as well. If I change my numbers here, I can do an update on that. Let's go. Let's change it to 20, and I can do a update run, and it will match up up to that. So it's it's works as it should, works as expected. I'm going to delete that run. The other place where we envision this is to be used quite often is when we have a vertical T's or, um, I don't know any other name for it. Um, vertical T's or tap. So, so oftentimes we have this type of thing. You, you can see the bus axis is running this way. So there, there would be a bus running through this pipe horizontally, but we may want to tie it down to something else. What we have done in the past is ran cylindrical surface to cylindrical surface, but by doing that, you don't know exactly where that cylindrical surface ends, but we, know, we do know exactly where the bus point ends. So if I came in here and ran from bus point to bus point, I'd be able to run that and I can have that offset that we have here, I can have that offset exactly what I need it to be for that offset, right? Here I got negative two and 2.5 there. So we're able to run that way as well. So we wanted to make, make sure we, you guys are aware of that tool. I think it helps us a lot for those key sit situations where we were, it was a little problematic in the past. The other area we want to look at is running bus. So that's the other item that we wanted to look at is just running bus. So we, look, we looked at some new tools. Uh, we looked at utility content. And now I'm just going to be running bus. And again, there's a Q&A at, at the end. So if I came up here and ran bus, so you can see in, in my window I have a couple um, leaders here say no bus guide and with bus guide. So the the gray one has a bus guide. You can see this is the bus point, work point guide out here. And of course, following our instructions, we have the bus point inside here. So we have that here. In this case here, it has no bus guide, the dark ones, and the dark ones only have the bus point. So things behave differently when we have this type of situation. So if I were to run, Two fittings to add round bus. Okay, this is going to be the first one. So two fittings to add round bus. And it's going to go to here to here. The software knows there's a bus guide. So it's not going to offset my bus for that, right? I have my offsets here at negative numbers. 
but it's going to ignore that because it sees it as a bus guide and it's going to the endpoint, so it's going to ignore it. Here, I'm going to add the same tool with the same settings with no bus guide, and you can see the offset is shown. Now, if I wanted to change that, I can also run this and keep those offsets by running pick fittings to add bus, and it doesn't really matter. Um, here, let's delete this. And I go pick fittings to add bus. I'm going to run from here to here, and it should obey the offsets. So we come down to here, uh, pick cylindrical surface. Okay, so we're going to delete that. So the other thing that I had people ask ask me uh, recently with the bus, and when, 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 one of the reasons I created this crazy assembly was because uh, they wanted to bend the bus. So let's say we're going to bend a, a bus here. Let's see, uh, let's just go, I'm gonna pick two fittings to add bus. I'm gonna pick this fitting to this fitting. It's gonna add my bus. You can see where the bend is. I pick two fittings, and this has always been here. This this tool was always able to do to do this. You can see where 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 where, where the bending is, and I'm going to delete that. So that's one way to add that bus. I can pick multiple fittings. I pick this fitting, this fitting, this fitting, this fitting, and it's going to bend it like that. So you can see how many changes we have with that. So if I did the same thing with no point added. So let's see what happens with no point added. It's a slightly different pen. It doesn't quite know where the guide is and it's trying to figure something out. Now what also we have is um, we have people who like to bend the bus up and around things. So let's, let's come up here and these fittings, even though I have these fittings, it could be a different type of fitting. It could be a slide through fitting like uh, over here. It could be a slip fitting like this or some other fitting that we want to bend through. It doesn't need to, need to be this shape. I'm just putting this shape in so I have my points. So if I came in here and picked fittings to add bus, I can bend it like that, okay? You can delete that run. If I just pick two fittings, it's just picking two fittings, it's going to come up with its own own routing. So you can see the difference. You can force it through a routing or uh, by having a, a secondary fitting or a secondary part. If you watch some of my other uh, webinars, I have uh, arrayed a part just, just to make my path, and then I deleted the array in the past. So we're able to do that type of thing. If I pick my two fittings for a bus without a bus guide, it doesn't know how to bend it, right? And here it's putting it off because my settings are not at zero, zero. So let's make sure my settings are at zero, zero. But without a bus guide, it doesn't know where to bend things. So again, I can hit here to here. It doesn't know where to bend it. So if I come up here and let's say we want to run, uh, let's see what's, what direction we want here. So let's go pick fittings. I'm going to pick this guy. I'm going to come down, come across. Then I want to come up into uh, this one. See what we get. And there's our bent pipe like that. So you can see the options that we have with that. If this height changed, if that height changed, let's come in here and change that height to, uh, I don't know, uh, 40. We can still do our, up, up, our update run, and it will come down accordingly. So you, there are so many options we can do to run bus, and this is the reason I, I made this uh, webinar is just so that everyone knew how many options we do have. I did another run here. Um, 
I can run here, I can run from this one, this one, this one, this one. Let's see how that one runs. All right. So you can see we got that bent thing. So we have a number of bent pipes like that I see people use. I also see people put an elbow in here, uh, put their own elbow in here. So in the handout I gave you, I mentioned in that handout for this bend, this bend is going to obey the bus radius here, okay? If it can't obey that radius, if it has a problem trying to obey this radius because you may have put a bad number in there, it is going to use the um, pipe diameter. So if we, let's look at that document. Let's just remind myself on that. So the bus radius the bus radius as a minimum is the bus pipe diameter. The maximum is the bus settings. So this is the maximum it will bend. That's what you're putting in there and that's what it's going to draw it to is that. But if you put the wrong number in here, it's going to use the um the bus diameter. So if you instead you put 1 inch radius, well it's going to use the bus diameter. And notice my offsets are zero when I'm doing these this bending. We need we need to be at zero for that bending. Of course, if we run bus, this is just on a bit of an angle here, kind of an odd angle, and we can run that as well. We can run uh, pick two fittings at bus, and there's our fitting. If we need an oversight over. Um, an extension on one side, I can do that bus and I can put an extension plus 12, save, and I can put those two fittings in there again. Maybe I didn't like the plus sign, maybe I shouldn't add the plus sign. It's probably looking for an addition. That's an indenture issue. Okay, so you can see how it offsets that 12. And of course, if I, for those who don't know, if I were to run it the opposite direction, the offset would be on the wrong side, and we wouldn't like that. Right? So that's no no good. If you look at up, let's delete that run and put it in right. So if we look at the update run tool, the update run tool is only to update the bus, um, the bus or 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 the cable, only up if update the bus or cable run if the terminal points have moved, changed, or whatnot. And that's what we did here when we moved this guy here. The edit run tool, the edit run tool is only for round bus, and here we can change. We can change the size here and apply that and say done. So here I've, I've changed the size. The eye properties should change. And you can see it's 5-inch schedule 40. So we're able to change that with the edit run. Now if I ran a piece of, um, let's say, um, angle bus from uh, uh, Okay, I'm going to have to change something here. I'm going to delete that run and make sure I have the same elevation on both of these. So let's change this elevation here because really an angle bus shouldn't be changing elevation on an angle unless it's mounted to angle. So if I run this here to here, here's my angle bus. No offset here. Has the offset down here. The heel is towards us. But if I try and edit that run, it's going to say, well, hey, it's not round. Because bus is so easy to place, we haven't had that option there. So if I ran this angle the opposite direction, you'll see the heel coming away from me here. So you can see the heel is away from me, and I'm running that angle there. The other thing I should point out in the settings, if you don't want these holes placed, you can turn these holes off. So you can turn that off, save, and you can run that 
piece of bus here again. So I'm going to run it from, well, let's go to the right to left. Uh, this guy, I think these are the same level. So that should be turned off, and I see it isn't, and I'm surprised. So I will be adding that to my features issue. OK. Oh, here it is. I turned off, off the wrong tool. OK, so we don't have that problem. Let's make sure we don't have that problem. That's my mistake. Anytime you do something live, something happens, right? So let's go from this one. this one and there's no whole pattern on 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 there so that is not an issue that's an operator fault and we'll go like this and there's no holes on here either all right so that's really all I had to show you was just running different bus different ways those who aren't aware you can just run here's my pick two fittings here's my offset my offset is long on one side, is zero on the other side, so it ends right here. A lot of times what people might have, they might have something like that, and then they might run another piece to the final des destination. Um, it doesn't really matter to uh, patch it like this because the bill of material is uh, totalized on the length of bus. So if I pick two fittings here, I can come into here and have that. And it doesn't, you can't really see that it's split there, but it is. Um, so at times you will find that you may want to add a piece specific. It, you, you tend to get that with the uh, slip fit items. Okay, so I think that's all I had today. Uh, there's lots of ways to run bus. You have the handout. If you guys have any questions, uh, we can follow those questions. Uh, this will be on YouTube uh, when we'll talk about that. Okay, so the bus operation guide is here. I wasn't going to make this a handout, then I thought I would. So just so you know, we you can go through here and you can read it. I'm not going to read it out to you, but we have these uh, this guide to help you run it. What I'm finding is people forget that the many ways of doing running bus. Uh, there's many ways to run cable. So in the future, I'll do a webinar on running cable many different ways. So if there's any questions. OK, I have a question. There is, will, will the configurator allow IPT files to be DI? Michael, you're going to have to explain what DI is. Download it. Yes, so of course. Um, so up in the uh, configurator, let's go to our new tool utility content tool. What an amazing tool. You can come in here and you can take any of these and you, you, you can download it, but it's not going to be an IPT, it's going to be a step. That's all we can do with uh, the uh, A360 or the C360. It's really called the C360. Uh, but if we download this, it can only be a step or a SAT. 3D DWF, but it can only be that right now. We are looking at different ways, a different configurator to bring in here, and uh, we'll see what we can do in the future. Uh, with the Forge in the background, converting of these tools, like we're using the Forge, um, the Forge tool to bring in these items, it's a really robust, um, many option tool, but it's really a back end tool, so it's not such a uh, 
front view with the, as with the C360. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you download load the step, if you um, you want to import it into Inventor. So if I came up here to file new, this is in, in our training, we, we uh, talk about this. I open up my template, and if I want to import a step file, I would open up an IPT, and this is the way we recommend doing it. So I can come up here and maybe browse. I probably have a uh, step file somewhere. Oh, maybe my downloads. Where are my downloads? Here's your insulator. Here's a step file here. I can bring that in and convert model solids. I always want it individual. In, individual is funny because really I want a multi-body part. I always want a multi-body part. I have other options here I can select and bring that in. This is the way I would recommend bringing something in. It's going to stick with the orientation that it was originally made in, so we can't really control that, can't change that. But what we can do once this is in here, I can always change something in here. So if I wanted to, I can come in and start a sketch on this level. I can draw a square. Come on, baby. There she goes. Finish. I'm going to dimension that and whatnot, and I can I, I can extrude that either up or through. Um, right. You can also change there that. There is a, a video on our knowledge base that shows different things that you can man manipulate a uh, a step file when you import it in. Uh, I, I'm going to be updating that video uh, in, in, in the next uh, number of weeks. I don't know when right now. Can we add custom elbows for the bus, like the conduit tool? So right now we're not adding an elbow. Those are just being bent. Um, we're not. So if you want an elbow, you would create your elbow and place it in as a, as a normal fitting. And then you can run your um, bus to that fitting. I, I neglected to throw an elbow in here. Uh, I have some good elbows, but we, we should be able to get some elbows off our utility content site. I don't even know if we have an elbow up, up, up here. I think Sepcor has elbows. Oh, well, no elbow found. Well, that's a good one to add here is put on some elbows. So I do have some elbows. They're parametric, and maybe I'll have to throw one up so we have those elbows. So if you wanted to bend it on, on, on a bus elbow, you would place a, maybe here. You know, you might come uh, point A to point B and then come up. Right. So if this was 60, and this was going to be an elbow, you'd make, make this one an elbow. So you'd run from here to there with the uh, bus. I could run from here to here with, with, with my bus. And then if this was an elbow, I could run directly up to the next fitting. And if you update the bus run, it will update that as well. So all the round bus will update accordingly if you move your uh, fittings. So if there's any other questions, you can bring them up. Uh, if you have feedback, have any questions with this as well, uh, come back to me and let me know, and we can discuss it as well. So I'm happy with the 7.4.3 release. It's a, a better release than uh, 
we have had at times, and uh, I'm, I'm liking it. I hope you guys are going to like it as well. The utility content update is a lot faster, a lot better, better search tools than the last one. Uh, a lot of people are had asked me, I shouldn't say a lot, but a number of people asked, asked, asked me about running round bus, and we talked in the SDS um, IC uh, industry consortium. We talked about just having some basic in-depth talk about different tools like bus, and I'll probably do a wire wire and cable one in the future. Dampening cable. Uh, dampening cable. So typically what I would do for dampening cable to add, add, add dampening cable to a, a pipe, uh, oft, oftentimes it is going through a circular edge, right? So typically what I would do is add a dampening cable. Just by using the cable tool, I come up to settings. I've returned my settings so I have no sag, 0% sag. Sag. I pick my dampening cable to whatever um, my, my standard is for my company. And I'd hit save. And then I would place my dampening cable using picking cylindrical surfaces. And I can place a dampening cable from here to here. Enter that. And inside here, there is a, a dampening cable. So I, I would say that is the best way. You can see the dampening cable is in here. Where is that? It's going to be in this assembly. There it is there. So it's in the middle. It's not on the bottom, but it's inside, and it will be counted and totalized. So if I delete that piece of bus, you can see the cables there, and I can delete the cable too. So we're good with working to, with uh, 2021 and 2017. We're not supporting, but I would think it would still work with 2017. Um, I don't see any issues that wouldn't work, that what changes that we have done, but uh, we're just not going to support it, just like um, Autodesk is not supporting 2017 either. How many bends in a broken a bus have? I don't know, Will. I think it's unlimited. I have I haven't I had a complaint with the software years ago and uh I wasn't getting enough um bends in a wire and I think we changed it to unlimited. Uh that one's turned, that's kinda cool. I don't know what the limit to the bus is, but that's that's a lot of bends. I don't think I'd want want want. I do not think I want to plumb that piece of pipe. That would be pretty complex with all those bends. The yellow nodes. The yellow nodes are our um, work points. So the way sub substation design suite works, it reads the fitting, and it reads the work points. So there are two work points on here. We have got the bus work point and the bus guide. So these two work points are added. And that's based on our document, uh, let's see, uh, automation requirements document. This is on the um, knowledge base. And we go through here, and it tells you what work points you need for any part. So here I've updated this recently. By the way, there has been four documents that have been up, updated recently. Um, and if you look in here, you can see what points and what uh, work geometry you need in each one. So you can come through here. Each page has a guide point, through point, name face. You may not need the through point in this case, but uh, it is there if, if you need it. There's notes in here as well. And it will go on, go through with many different types that we can work with and allow you to work with the, uh, the automation tool. So if I come into our website, I should see it in here. Let's go to support documents. Uh, let's see, uh, import surface, automation requirements, and it should be updated. By the way, I've updated the substation modeling strategy as well. So if I right click, I can save that and download. It's a PDF. 
uh, substation modeling strategy has been updated as well. Uh, main, the main thing we are talking internally with, there's some changes with Inventor over 2019 to 2021 um, that just made us tweak this a little bit. And the main thing I tweaked in here was um, using simplified parts over um, shrink wrap. I'm just recommending simplified parts is now giving us more choices, more options to do that. So I'd take a look at uh, this up, up, updated version if you wanted to read that as well. And that's in our training, our new, our updated training over um, Christmas. We updated the training. Okay, I guess we will leave. Um, if you have any questions, send me an email or send an email to SDS support. If you look at the bottom of our pages, you'll see SDS support down here. Uh, typically, I have that available. That will come to a group of people. It will get registered for support issues. It will be uh, tracked and managed. If you e email just me, I might put it in there, or if it's a simple answer, I'll answer directly. But um, if it's a, a real support issue, I'll make sure it gets tracked and identified. This doesn't just go to me, of course, it goes to the team. Oh, that's a good question, Nathan. So Nathan has asked a question about when we drop a part into our assembly, it goes to the lowest assembly. And that's the way substation design suite is designed to be. So if you look at, let's collapse this. So it's not an adjustable item in, in here, right? But if I were, I'm in a general, I, I, I'm in a higher assembly. Right, I'm in a higher assembly. I got two subassemblies in here, but if I had a subassembly of a subassembly, it, it might behave, behave a little bit different. But if I come in here and add a, um, I don't know, I'm going to add a part in here and add it to here, that part is added to this higher assembly, right? Okay, so it. If I wanted to add it to this assembly, I'd have to open this assembly and add it here. Right? I don't know what this is going to be. Right? So now that's in the lower assembly. So it's, it's going to be in the lowest assembly. Well, it's going to be in the first assembly it finds, so I guess that would be a better way to term it. So when I place this piece of bus in this assembly, it went into this assembly, because that's the way we felt, felt it. If this bus comes from this assembly to this assembly, so let's just pick two fittings to add bus. If I come from, uh, let's see, what we should be able to do is come from here to here, and that is in this highest assembly now, right? It's because it's crossing two assemblies. So what what assembly should it be in? It should be in the higher assembly. It's just a gen, general philosophy. And then if this changes in position, it will update accordingly. So if I come in here and change this number from 60 to, um, let's just add 10, I should be able to update that run accordingly. I hope that helps, Nathan. So what some people do with uh, adjusting that, they will make sub-assemblies to be able to uh, place it easier. Um, there's nothing wrong with making lots of sub-assemblies that allows for more flexibility in your drawings as well. So part of the substation modeling strategy is to talk about sub-assemblies and making sub-assemblies. Uh, just gives you so many more options. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I'm going to end the, end the uh, webinar, and thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. If you have questions, you got SDS support or my email directly. If it's a simple one, if I deem it's not simple, I will move it into our support issues. 
So I would recommend SDS support if you have a real issue to talk about, and that will get traced, tracked, and uh, it will link to an artifact if, if a correction to the software is needed. So I would recommend that method. Again, thanks for coming out. This will be on the YouTube site. If you go on to our YouTube site, we have a number of webinars on there. It's uh, Spatial Business Systems YouTube site, so you should be able to find it just looking up Spatial Business Systems. We also have the knowledge base when you log into our uh, website. And um, once you're in there, you can download videos and documents as well. Okay. Thank you all.